so much better. I'm, I have so much less pain. I'm able to take up pretty much my normal life. Um, I'm semi-retired now. I don't work all the time like I used to. I certainly don't put in the hours I used to. Um, and uh, I'm just so thankful that God has directed us to uh, the right people at, in uh, Minnesota. Uh, we are affiliated with the House of Compassion there and uh, they uh, help us with the stays and the visits and coordinations with that and then Pilots for Christ in the transportation uh, and uh, we're just so thankful. To, uh, I certainly am not to have to, after this procedure and these things to have to try to navigate the ins and outs of a, of a typical municipal airport. It is, it's brutal. Uh, even though they try their best and they try to do the best that they can, it's brutal uh, to have those people just be in your way. All you want to do is just, just get home. Yeah. And so uh, this Pilots for Christ today will take, um, will take basically a full day's journey, probably about a, I'd say about a 16 hour day that I could would be very difficult to do and turn it into about a four hour journey. It'll take it a minimum of a week off of my recuperation time. And uh, praise God for that. We're so thankful uh, for what God has done to lead us to get fourth time up here. It is our fourth time to the Mayo. And um, it never gets any less stressful when they tell you you need to go. But it's never any more comforting when you get there because everybody that you need is there. And it's not just a good doctor. God has led us to the perfect doctors. The doctor that invented the actual diagnosis of how do you know if a patient has polycythemia is in the very uh, office where we go every time. And so God put that doctor right there in our path. And then the other doctor that he put right there in our path is the one doctor that comes from Europe uh, two or three times a year. And he's, as Doug said, he's number 86 in the world that's ever had this surgery. So we don't, we don't know anything to say except God put every one of these people right where they are and uh, we are so grateful even the house of compassion has opened our eyes to a whole new ministry of where do you stay what do you do when you're going through these terrible medical procedures and they're so painful and Doug is never going to complain or never whine but he lives with a pain level somewhere around a seven or an eight every day and uh, when you have these procedures uh, they're off the charts for several weeks, but uh, we're so grateful because we know God took us every step of this journey to the House of Compassion. To those wonderful people that and we have now become a part of that house. When we go, we're not guests; we're workers, and uh, uh, we we just know that that God is in control. We are so not, <laughs> and we have so accepted that. Uh, and we are just so thankful that Doug has been spared. Our children have been so afraid. You know, we go all that distance, and our children can't come with us. Our parents can't come with us. It's just us. And uh, it's been uh, such a comfort to know that uh, we are in a good place with good people, and our children are so appreciative. <laughs> we had a little extra excitement while we were here because I have asthma very badly, and that was one reason that we were talking to Carolyn Castleberry. She wanted me to go to where she goes to get her treatments and so one day but God is so good we take turns being sick we agree to never be sick on Sunday and Doug had just had his first little shimmer of recovery and light and hope and I had a terrible asthma attack to the point where he was calling 911 and I think he got the nine and I was with my last breath I was going no please because we had a huge doctor's appointment for him but again God took care of it we called our doctor in Troy Alabama here we are in the Mayo Clinic but she prescribed all the medications I needed got me through the week and uh, so uh, we're quite an exciting couple that's right <laughs> well I understand you run Troy University <laughs> Well, uh, um, I work really hard for Troy. Troy will let you work yourself to death for them if you are so willing. And I've done that now for 25 years. So it's my pleasure to be with Troy. And, and you're the person that lets the folks into Troy University, I, right? I, I help. I make sure you get your grades, and I tell the faculty all the time, you can teach all day long, but until I record that grade, it's just your word against mine. <laughs> because you don't know unless you've been there. Just a daily expense of 
of trying to feed yourself. You're so right. But at the house, the other thing we get to do to help other people, we buy enough food to cook for us and for at least one or two other families in the house. And so then we become, we get the pleasure of getting to serve other people and they don't know about Southern cooking in Rochester. So we fix all the Southern treats. We have cheese grits and homemade biscuits and, and uh, homemade apple and blueberry pie. And it's just, uh, it's, they're so grateful to have something good to eat and something as little as food. Some days that's the only comfort you have. <laughs> That's a cool story. You didn't bring me that blueberry apple pie with yeah. you, did you? Uh, no, I, but I, I can whip one up. I don't need you to. I'm